Unfortunately for us, water is the perfect carrier for health challenges. So things like bacteria, viruses, protozoa, roundworms. So when we look at these three bottles of water, the clear one is number one, the one that looks like bad tea is number two, and then the snow globe is number three. So kind of hold that thought, we're gonna to move to the next one, and you, I'm gonna ask you guys, which one has the most bacteria? The clear, the brown, the snow globe, or all of them? Actually, the clear one has the most bacteria in it. So yeah, so the take home message there is you can't just look at your water and go, I've got good water. You better dig in a little tighter than that and test. And unfortunately for us, poultry drinking water systems make it very easy for things to move in and get comfortable and be a problem for us. You know, the water's slow moving. We warm it during brooding. Um, systems have, you know, pinch points, regulators. I'm going to show you guys a picture in a minute of a regulator that I just pulled last week after cleaning. We'll talk about that. But there's just so many things, places in the system that can be a problem for us. Unfortunately, water often contains the food that microorganisms need. If you have iron, sulfur, or manganese, most likely you've got something living in your water that's not a friend. And then we want to add food. So we'll move forward. And I just want to show this. I mean, this is just a typical day to me. Somebody's going, hey, we're working on our water. We're making progress. But I've got this farm that's still having all these health issues. So we're doing some testing. And we're finding things like E. coli, Pseudomonas, Staph, Klebsiella. And in this case, he's going, what's Klebsiella? I've read, you know, it's a bad thing for cows and mastitis. But is that a problem for chicks? Well, it's kind of the pneumonia bacteria, but take home message, nothing surprises me anymore about what people tell me they find in their water. All bets are off. Anything can be there. And the source of our challenge is the biofilm. And I used to tell people, well, you know, we can get biofilm, but just water systems just have biofilm. That's it. That's just the way life is. It's going to be there. But can we keep it kind of contained and win the numbers game, or are we letting that biofilm grow and thrive? And it can just harbor just about anything. E. coli, pseudomonas, staph, you know, they can find that. It can be in their flock after flock. They've proven that if you use something like LT vaccine, and then you up to three weeks later after vaccinating, there's still LT vaccine in the biofilm that's viable. So what else is going on there? And unfortunately, the dirtier the system, the more that biofilm has built a wall and built a building and has windows that it can look out and go, oh, there's something out there today. Close the doors good. Don't let it come bother us. The more that gets done, the more, the harder it is to clean. And one thing that I'm beginning to wonder about is could our waterline sanitation programs be creating superbugs? So we think about the little picture up on top there. We kind of, you know, we've cleaned, we've knocked everybody out, but maybe two little bugs. Well, have we turned those guys into the survivors? And then now they're going to make more survivors. And then over time, as the biofilm builds up and it can't get rid of its trash and it doesn't have enough food, well, it's going to be like, you know, many other places. Some of you've got to leave. You've got to go live somewhere else. So it's going to mushroom up. Part of it's going to break off, and it's going to go right down to our birds. So we've got to win the biofilm game, or if nothing else, we've got to keep it contained. And if you don't think, you know, microbes can be a problem, kind of put this into perspective. One little E. coli, one tiny little E. coli that we can't even see, hold him at 90 degrees, make sure, you know, he's got a little bit of food, in 24 hours, how many could we have from just one little guy starting out in 24 hours? Anybody want to guess? I should have made a question on this. Anybody want to guess? Thousand? Ten thousand? Million? Trillions. Trillions. In I mean, that's how fast these things, when given the right opportunity, can create the numbers that now the numbers may turn on us in our production facilities. And then you add another stressor on top of it, and boom, we have a disease. So, you know, the thought is, again, we gotta keep wondering in the back of our minds, 
is our current sanitation programs working for us or is it helping to create superbugs that maybe we need to get a little more creative on staying after them? What happens to water quality if we turn our sanitation off? Well, on our farm, we have an 80,000 broiler flock farm. The university does. We got to pay the bills just like the rest of you with our farm. So we're trying to do things right. We're running chlorination, acidification. We're cleaning our lines. We've looked, they look clean starting out. Well, unfortunately, our area, we had LT. So now we got LT vaccinated around day seven. So the protocol was two days before the vaccination, you start running a little something in the water. I don't know where that came from, but it's the way it is. So, all right, we start doing that. Now we get a little bacteria running in that water. Then we get to where the yellow is, and that's time to run the vaccine. Now we got 50,000 colony forming units of bacteria in the water. Well, then, all right, we got to baby them through the vaccine reaction, a little ioprin, this, that, and the other. A week later, we got half a million colony forming units of just stuff in our water. So now we've vaccinated them, and then we're putting this challenge on top of it. And I went back to the vets and I said, why do we have this long drawn out process? Like, well, that's the way we've always done it. Well, that doesn't make it right. So we really have tightened up that window. In fact, I even have some people that are telling me they never turn their sanitizer off. They just pop in a carbon filter, neutralize that sanitizer, do their vaccine and go back. And they don't compromise their water quality and they're getting decent tighter. So I'm not telling you to change your vaccine program. I'm just telling you, if you seem to have health challenges that kind of come out after you've been off water sanitation for several days, maybe it's because we're giving things a window to come out and be a problem for us.